Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I am Dustin Ghost Hollywood. I'm the devil, and I'm here to do devil shit. <laughs> I'm Nathan Simmons, and I'm eating some gumbo. <laughs> and this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. And it doesn't get much more bleak than going straight to hell. No shit, right? <laughs> Wait, hang on. Sidebar, do you really have gumbo? Mm-mm. Oh, damn. God, I wish I did. I know, right? It sounds I know it, delicious. It's the wrong reaction, but this movie made me really hungry, like multiple times. <laughs> you too, huh? <laughs> Cajun yeah. food did sound really I'm good. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Yeah, uh, guys, I just realized this is we got to start like a new category of movies for the show where the protagonist of the movie goes to hell at the end of it because yeah. this is at least one of two. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, this and what? Drag me to hell. Drag me to hell. I'm trying to think if there's another. You guys haven't done Jason Goes to Hell, right? No, not yet. Okay. Might be a oh. contender. I can't oh, think. Oh, boy. Is it, I watched, <laughs> I watched all those movies for the first time uh, earlier this year. Oh, right. I just yeah. always put them off, and they all blend together. <laughs> so, um, yeah, dude, especially, like, once you get past two, mm-hmm. I couldn't tell you what happened in any of mm-hmm. them. I watched them, and I watched uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, because mm-hmm. I hadn't seen all of them before, so I decided to run through oh, that. Boy. Both those series. Yeah. Yeah, it's a blur. <laughs> <laughs> um dude isn't west craven's new nightmare wild though it's so much better than i thought it was gonna it be it rules right yeah right yeah. i i yeah. i had always heard this is the prototype of scream yeah but i i think i might like it more than scream me too oh that's a oh that's a bold call because it's actually pretty scary like bold scream's call. not really scary Scary. Well, especially if you're if you're married. I, I love that we're starting off with like a treatise <laughs> on the uh, <laughs> the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Mm-hmm. But like, especially if you're marathoning that series, which I, I did a few years ago when I got the Blu-ray set. It is mm-hmm. it is so wild to go from uh, the Dream Child and Freddy's Dead, and then see <laughs> yeah. and then see Robert England being terrifying yes. again, and also. Playing himself in the same movie. <laughs> and yeah, and yeah. crushing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know, for real. Uh, but anyways, we're not talking about either yeah. of Speaking those of movies that rule. Actually, this is the fifth season. Mm-hmm. How many Halloween movies have we done? We've done like four. I yeah, think we've done like one that, yeah. almost every season. We yeah. haven't done a single one of those Friday or Nightmare movies. Well, because we, we wanted to work our way through the best horror yeah. movie franchise yeah, yeah. Stay first. Stay tuned. Definitely yeah, which is tuned. yeah, which is why you've done uh, the curse of Michael Myers. <laughs> Shut up, Nathan. Um. Anyway, that all I that said is the best aside. overall franchise, Fair enough. not Fair enough. the best from that franchise. All that aside, if you're new to the show, uh, what we like to do here is ramble about everything but the movie we're talking about this week. <laughs> um, <laughs> But we like to watch movies like this uh, where we kind of already given it away, but mm-hmm. the ending is not uh, a neat little bow on the yeah. end of the story. It's uh, usually uh, depressing. Well, I mean, from a certain point of view. True. I can, I'm can. <laughs> i guessing that's a hint towards your silver lining for this week. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, movies that, uh, that don't really qualify for that happily ever after uh, type of ending. So sure. um, this week... We are talking about the 1987 movie Angel Heart, um, not to be confused with uh, Braveheart, Wild at Heart, or Braveheart, <laughs> sure, or Crazy. We got to do the Heart movies on this. <laughs> do we? Braveheart counts, right? Um, I don't yeah. remember exactly how it ends. I just remember there's some Kinda. ball stuff included. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> um. That's how it ends. Guys, before we even get into Angel Heart, uh, we have to get to part two of three with (laughs) our little mini segment of Dustin watching The Leftovers. Oh, sure. So, (sighs) Jesus Christ. I've been watching The Leftovers. How sad are you right now? Uh, Well, scale of one to ten. Let's go. 
Your tweets have been getting melancholy, man. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm very worried about you. Because again, the only thing that shows up on Twitter when I open it is your shit. And it's just, it's it's getting dark. <laughs> What's the point? Um, so if you didn't tune in last week, uh, when we first started this segment, uh, <laughs> I had just finished season one of The Leftovers before we recorded Pi. Uh, since then, I've watched all of season two. Whew. And I really wanted to resist starting season three until after we recorded this episode <laughs> to kind of keep it as like a nice trilogy. But I held off. I only watched season three, episode one, and then I held off because I'm like, I gotta, yeah. Um, it's getting bad. <laughs> Wait, no, the show's great. Okay, me myself getting sure. getting bad. Uh, not doing well. Oh, okay. see, that makes more sense. I think that's like, why I didn't finish it. Like, I watched season one during a deep depression. It was just like, mm-hmm. I need to watch literally anything else. Oh, I watched all three seasons during a deep depression. Oh. It was a horrible idea on my I've part. Had, Great show, though. I've had the one, two, three punch of The Leftovers, watching movies for this podcast, <laughs> and then we've talked about it off air, but Bo Burnham dropped inside oh yeah yeah and life you can toss that in there too but yeah it's it's been a very isolated feeling like uh <laughs> easily to to summarize how i'm feeling is you can take that song from bo burnham special shit and that's kind of <laughs> how i feel <laughs> um ladies are you feeling like shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh but no the leftovers is great uh, tune in next week to the riveting conclusion after I've seen all of season three, uh, which is the final just, season. I think I had told this to Dustin the other day, but I was like, I'm just waiting for that text that says, do you think we could do an episode on The Leftovers? Oh, <laughs> we sure. definitely could. Like, if we wanted to venture into TV, that would definitely be like, me. You can just the any, pilot. Yeah, mm-hmm. any episode, any, any season, we could just, we could do... An entire podcast on that show alone, sure. probably. Mm-hmm. And if you want to go down the route of like weird endings, like we occasionally do on the show, we could do all of Watchmen because <laughs> a oh lot of boy. those episodes, also true, a lot of those episodes in yeah, yeah. some question marks. Uh, but yeah, uh, hey, same showrunner. So there you go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah. So um, to summarize, uh, not doing well. <laughs> Anyway, this is my new favorite segment. <laughs> oh, if you like segments, I want to introduce one and see what you guys think okay. live here on the air. I regret saying anything. This one's this one's easy, but <laughs> this this movie um, put me in a mood of you know when I'm watching it, I'm like, what what kind of drink would I like to have while watching this movie? Oh. Because I was watching next week's. Uh, episode as yeah. well and i was like "Ooh, i would love to have a specific <laughs> drink that i don't want to mention because it'll give away <laughs> sure and just keeping with tradition i have no idea what next week's movie is <laughs> <laughs> um but i was like "Ooh, this would be a good segment like every week i come up with a drink to drink while we record mm-hmm. that like a, either a cocktail or a specific brand of booze or a beer or something and i'm like what what would this movie put me in the mood for Angel Heart? It's the eighties. It's a neo noir detective thriller yeah. horror movie, and I just went straight up. I I want a whiskey. Yes, like, this is a whiskey movie, right? Yes. So, oh yeah, got myself a little glass of whiskey right here. Hell yeah, big ass ice cube in it. Um, so yeah, no, we heard we heard the ice cube. That is such a true thing. Every time I watch a noir, I want whiskey. Like, even, like, yeah. the last time I watched Roger Rabbit, because Eddie Valiant's, like, a recovering alcoholic, <laughs> I was like, you know what? I want a Jack and Coke yeah. right now. Makes yeah, sense. Yeah, So, for this episode, because it's such a grimy movie, sure. I went with a grimy kind of whiskey. Uh-huh. This is uh, Jim Beam. best. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I went with Jim Beam, because it's, like... Yeah, but like Jim Beam with like a little sand mixed into it. <laughs> you poured some sweat in there. I poured some gumbo straight in here. No, uh, <laughs> just some Jim Beam and andouille sausage. It's, it's, it's Jim Beam with a chicken foot in it. <laughs> well, like Jim Beam's not bottom shelf whiskey necessarily, but it's yeah. certainly like I think of it as like the PBR of whiskey. Like it's not great. Yeah, what? But it's the best of the worst. 
Uh, right. So you've never had Kentucky's best, clearly. I have or not. Evan Williams. I'm not. Oh, you're boy. The name's <laughs> ironic. All right. Well, that's my new segment. So like next it. week we'll keep that train rolling. Um. Anyway, so uh, Angel Heart uh, from 1987. Um, Mally, this was your choice, I believe. So yeah, and you're t- fucking welcome, guys. <laughs> Tell us why yeah, you picked thanks, it, dude. and what your relationship is with this movie well i picked it for reasons that will become obvious as we discuss the film (laughs) um Mm -hmm. so i first saw this movie like i don't know if it was like if like my parents had a vhs of it or if i caught it on tv or something but i remember watching it when i was real little and just being like oh this is a cop movie okay and then I rewatched it like a year ago because it was just like streaming somewhere. I was like, oh, wait, I re- like, hang on. I remember this movie. Yeah. And like I, I was looking at the cast. I was like, oh, I don't remember. It. Oh, wait, hang on. Like, was this movie like awesome? And like I was just little and didn't know that because I saw the I was like Mickey Rorick, mm-hmm. Robert De Niro. Right. I was like, OK, this cast is like good. And then I watched it. And then, you know saw what happens in the movie i was like what the fuck (laughs) and i was like this movie yeah fucking awesome (laughs) also did you all ever see that movie fallen with denzel washington yeah i just saw it for the first time like three weeks ago i mean it just straight up ripped this movie (laughs) off huh yes oh yeah that's gonna potentially be a future episode because what a fucking movie (laughs) it feels like it feels like they were like oh no one saw angel hurt (laughs) Yeah, it's a worse version of Angel Heart. Yeah. Which is funny, because my mother loves Fallen. (laughs) But I do remember her buying that movie because it had Denzel Washington in it. Like, the one, the first DVD my parents owned was Fallen. Oh, weird. Followed closely by Pearl Harbor. You know, Um, there was a weird thing in the late 80s and early 90s of, like, let's do detective movies, but put the devil in it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Very weird subject. And then it came yeah. back in the late 90s with stuff like Fallen and like End of Days. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I, I got to say, I, I don't I, I don't like it. I love this genre. Per- I, no, I'm here for it. I don't. I don't like it at all. It's like, I like it when it's done well. <laughs> Fallen made me dislike the Rolling Stones even more than I already do. Oh, sure. Because Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, I... Nathan, what about you? What was your relationship like with this movie? When was the first so, time you saw it? So when, when Mally said we're going to do Angel Heart, I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I've seen that. And then I realized very quickly while watching it that I've seen like clips of it. And like, mm. <laughs> I think I was extrapolating some other movie that because in my head I was like, oh, yeah, that voodoo movie. And voodoo's a part of it, but it is not the movie I thought it was. I have no, no. idea well, what I was expecting. Like, okay, it's like, it's like a noir. It's kind of like voodoo Chinatown. Sure, yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's got that that vibe. I mean, it's got that uh that Trevor Jones score which just fucks. Like Oh, dude, <laughs> the music in this movie rules. Like immediately, like 30 seconds in, my first note was this saxophone is doing. That's work. my my first Jesus note is this score Christ, fucks. The fucking saxophone. God damn it with the saxophone in this yeah, movie. It was fucking awesome, wasn't it, Ugh. Dustin? Yeah. Oh. You don't love that sweet alto sound? It does veer a little bit into like Skinamax territory, and that's yeah, even before it's the tits come out. Definitely porno saxophone. <laughs> nah, dude, porno's got it from this. <laughs> pornos, pornos oh. have been stealing from Angel Heart for twenty years, <laughs> um, dude. That's what I'm saying. Everything's been ripping off Angel Heart. This, uh, I Every, all all creativity stems from Angel Heart or Halloween yeah. Six. <laughs> I mean, that's just, I mean, that's just science. Everyone yeah, we, knows. Yeah, we found out on that episode that Rise of the Skywalker really, really took a lot from <laughs> Halloween 6. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I, I really dug this. I was not, I had no idea what to expect, although I, well, we can get into it in a minute, but like within five minutes, I think I figured out what the twist was. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> like it is, it telegraphs everything hard. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. But I still, I was, I, I dig the neo noir. I, I mean, I love noir in general. Um, but when it's done well, I, I like those kind of genre bending movies. Um, and this was, this was a treat. <laughs> this was a grimy, gross treat. <laughs> yeah. It really was. Well, this was 
This was my first time seeing this movie. You didn't get it from the A section at Movie Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I left with Anaconda, Angel Heart. <laughs> so if you that that is a great double feature in my opinion. <laughs> I love the first Anaconda movie. Me too. I, I found this somewhat of uh, a very strange coincidence because Mal, you pitched the idea of doing Angel Heart on the show. I was mm-hmm. like, okay, I've never seen that. I hear it's great. I'll finally get a chance to watch it. And then the weeks leading up to me actually seeing it for the first time, I was listening to uh, to Bill Burr's podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he was talking about how he had just rewatched it the night before. Oh, wow. Huh. And it was like, oh, this is a this is a great movie. Why why didn't I? Why is this not included in like my favorite movies list? And then he's like, oh, and then I get to the part where Lisa Bonet is cutting open chickens and pouring <laughs> them all over herself. She goes, oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's really fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> So I knew that was coming before I even saw the movie. That's so and funny. I just thought it was so funny because like of all the movies he could have referenced right. that I'm about to watch, and now I have this weird spoiler alert. <laughs> My favorite bit of this movie is the running joke with him not liking chickens. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so... like Which feels <laughs> like such a specific that Mickey Rourke would just say, like, oh, I think I'm, my character's gonna have a chicken thing. Like, and he just, like, says that through the movie. Do you think that, that or do you think he himself doesn't like chickens and just When he's said running that. away from the two guys, and he, like, crashes the doors and it's just into a chicken coop, he's like, oh, shit! <laughs> and he reacts like Indiana Jones falling into a pit of snakes. I was snakes. gonna say, <laughs> should he have made a comment like, wow, well, why did it have to be chickens? <laughs> I think he says fucking chickens. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, we kind of know where we all stand on this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's fucking awesome. I, Mally thinks it's amazing. Nathan thinks it's great. I do not like it, but we will get into that. <laughs> so, uh, Dustin, quick question before we really get into it. What's it like being so wrong? I'm not... It's not uncommon for me. This is a movie that I really <laughs> dug, but I also think is a mess. <laughs> Well, we'll get into that, but okay. first, nah, let's talk guys, about... I'm, I'm going I'm to do it right now. I'm putting Angel Heart up there with Con Air and Face Off. Oh, You're not going to poke holes in this. That is fucking You're not going to poke bold. holes in this movie, guys. That is bold. All you're but, telling me is that Nick Cage should have been in it. <laughs> Dude, if Nick Cage was the Mickey Rourke role, I might have liked it better. Guys, how good would it have been? Let's talk about the details surrounding Angel Heart. Sure. So the year, as we mentioned, is 1987. Uh, the director is Alan Parker. The movie stars, as we previously mentioned, Mickey Rourke. I'm going to butcher this name. Stalker Fontaleau. Mm-hmm. Lisa Bonet. Robert De Niro. Brownie McGee, which, what a fucking name. Great name. And Charlotte Rampling. Um, the budget was $17 million, and the movie managed to make $17 million. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Nope. That makes sense. It currently sits at a 79% on Rotten Tomatoes. And it, er- it earns every bit of that. Nope, too high. I was going to go ahead and say it. Too fucking high. God, you're so wrong. The, you know the director of this, like, previously had done, like, only musicals? Like, he yeah. made Bugsy mm-hmm. Malone, like, Fame, Pink Floyd's The Wall. Like, No, I did not. And then he's just like, I'm going to make the darkest fucking movie possible. Well, funny enough, his movie before this was Birdie, which stars Nicolas Cage. Oh, right. Yeah. I actually read a story. I don't know how true it is, but when they... Pitch the idea to Robert De Niro to star, well, co-star in this movie, that Alan Parker called him, and the first question Robert De Niro asked him was, are you the guy that made Birdie? And he said yes, and he, he hung up the phone. <laughs> 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 Don't know how true that is, but it's pretty funny. I hope that's uh, true. So. so his last movie was, uh, was it The Life of David Gale? Is that the movie? Is that what it's yeah. called? Mm-hmm. That Kevin Spacey movie? Yeah. Which, uh, that's, you know... A problematic film. Yeah. If you've never seen it. Wasn't The Life of David Gale one of the few movies Roger Ebert gave like zero stars? Ooh. Yeah. And it, I mean, it starts, so it's like Laura Linney, Kevin Spacey. Oh, I remember and this. And it's like, yeah. it's that movie about people like, <sighs> and it, like it's, it's the Death Row movie, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And it, who it's, <laughs> it's, hmm. <laughs> let's watch this trailer. Yeah. Let's watch this trailer. Because it's, boy, this trailer has got ADD, but we'll get into it. <laughs> it was the 80s, man. Everyone was on coke. The Exorcist. The right off the, exorcist. the bat. The this movie's got some Man, they spoiled, they spoiled this movie immediately, huh? Chinatown. Well, how dare the they compare themselves the human to the Exorcist in Chinatown? <laughs> right. 
Yeah. From the man who brought you fame. <laughs> Do you know what today, today the star, is? The future today star of Harley day. Davidson and the Marlboro Man. <laughs> I like that movie. Think happened day. Also, pretty bold to show a lot of the end of the movie <laughs> right. in this trailer. The, I mean, you wouldn't know. The final credits. Also, I have a problem My with that. Job. Special oh, appearance. Yeah. Special it says that in the, tra- in the uh, opening credits, too. Yeah. Special appearance yeah. by yeah. Robert De Niro. Yeah. Check He's on up. the goddamn poster. How is that a special I'm just a guy musical guest? Robert <laughs> <laughs> De Niro. Where is he? I don't the know. great oh. SNL voice, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. Was he driving the car? To the sto- like more than a steering mystery. the steering wheel with he's just dead. his fingers? Like mm-hmm. there's no grip there. Isn't. You don't do that. <laughs> That's the scene where he's whistling along to the score. Are you afraid? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid. <laughs> Wow, this is a really quick cut trailer, huh? Yeah. It's, it's got ADD, man, I'm telling you. It's all over I've never, the place. Like, most 80s trailers have a much more, like, luxurious pace. Nope. The Prince of Dark. No, this trailer is going for it. Yeah, a lot of the end of the movie. That happens a lot with, with the movies on this podcast, too. Yeah. I mean, nothing beats quarantine, though. Oh. Did you know that? If I can go my entire life without well, ever having to watch right Robert around, De Niro eat an egg again, and more and more I will be so happy. <laughs> okay, so that tap dancing seems awesome. Does she ever wanted to come? There's death everywhere these days. Him with his coat fingernails. Hey, De Niro's nails are immaculate in this movie, as is his beard and his man bun. <laughs> He's the only not sweaty character in the movie. <laughs> this is a very sweaty movie, for sure. I mean, it's in New Orleans, so it's accurate. It's seen in the gumbo house. I mean, I don't want to say too much about next week's episode, but next week's episode has a lot of sweaty movies. Very sweaty. Okay, so I know we're doing a sweaty movie next week, and that's all I know. Great. <laughs> yeah, it's glistening. Sweaty movie with a very particular Every alcoholic beverage. Yeah. To search for the truth. Pray he doesn't find it. Okay. Hmm. That was the final shot at the end of the credits in the movie. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. The Dark Knight did that, too. I know. So, so did, did Quarantine. Uh, quarantine <laughs> and... Oh, God, that's right. The Happening puts the final shot of the movie in the trailer. Yeah. Well, hey, at least no one talked to a fucking plant in this movie. <laughs> uh, okay, guys. Let's get into the movie. Sure. Well, hang on. Real quick, so... We talked about this before we started recording, but that's a very different trailer from the one me and Nathan right. watched. Yeah, I'm assuming you guys saw the Blu-ray restoration trailer. I think that's, that's what it was. The, yeah. Yeah, the one that was on streaming. Yeah, I try to steer clear of those because they're not like the originals. I try to go for sure. the original trailer to, you know, what audiences saw back then. Well, so. see, we were being lazy because it was just like right there. <laughs> the, and that somehow that trailer, uh, the one that's on Prime, feels like it gives away less. It really even does. Even though the movie's yeah. like... You know, 30 years, almost 30 years old. <laughs> Over 30 years old. Jeez. Oh, <sighs> yeah. No, this movie's older than I am. So let's get into the movie. Um, where do we want to start? Because there's this movie's there's a lot going on. <laughs> I mean, okay, let's uh, let's start at the end and work our way I'm forward fine with that. Honestly, I was joking, <laughs> dude. I got to tell you, uh, I have a lot of unironic lol moments in this movie like okay. stuff i'm not supposed to laugh at uh-huh. but i find so fucking funny <laughs> for example okay yeah go ahead mickey rourke just this dude is a walking cliche yeah and it is so goddamn funny of like a dude from like he's from boston right yeah i think in, so in brooklyn brooklyn. Bo- brooklyn oh he's brooklyn. I, like how can you forget? He says, I'm from Brooklyn, like That's every true. 10 minutes That's in this true. movie. <laughs> yeah. But like everyone he meets, the first thing he says, I'm from Brooklyn. And I don't like chickens. And goes, I don't like chickens. For example, my favorite part is when he goes to put the doctor in the bed. <laughs> he was like, oh, hey, oh, I'm going to go get a cheeseburger to shake. Let me light my cigarette with a match yeah. off your shoe. Ooh. <laughs> Dude, hey, he, uh, I, I send the calzone into space. He likes so many matches with just random objects, like his sure. fingernail, uh, the dead guy's uh, shoe. And yeah, I'm he's like, going to love so, hell. He can so light his cool. match anywhere. Dude, just, just just the way he says cheeseburger is so fucking funny. Cheeseburger. To me because cheeseburger. <laughs> uh, it did make me want a cheeseburger and a shake, This is though. the level of comedy we've gotten to. We're mocking accents. But do you mean, like, it made me question. Yeah. Just his entire career. Like, is Mickey Rourke a good actor? Yes. 
Okay. Here's the uh, here's what I think. I think this character is written so flatly, and yes. any personality that's coming through is because of Mickey Rourke. Yeah. Like, he doesn't get to really act no, until and the last 20 minutes. He's also, like, not great at his job. He kind of mm-hmm. shows, he, like, threatens a lot of people, then finds them dead later, and then will usually ask another police officer something that'll lead him to the next murder. <laughs> well, and, yeah, and ours, aren't, like, private investigators supposed to be, like, sneaky and stuff? Everyone he meets, he's like, I'm a private investigator. It's like, or well, yeah, fucking- or he he goes up with his fake ID and then he still says, "I'm Harry Angel." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta, we gotta tie it even more because I kind of want Mally to figure it out before the end of this episode. But the movie we're doing next week too has some, also somebody who's not great at their job. Technically, <laughs> oh yeah, acts like they're a celebrity when they're supposed yeah. to be undercover. Yes. <laughs> what? So that's Mickey yeah. Rourke in this movie too, like. You know, we talked about doing The Wrestler, and we will probably next season yeah. for this, this we show. Got to, but, like, yeah. that movie, he's fucking transcendent in. Yeah. Like, he, he jumps off the fucking page. And in this Some movie, Some would say he's rather... He jumps out of this movie, too? But Some not in the say. right way. <laughs> well, okay. I, yeah, I think it is the character. I think the character is just who I don't like, because... He's not likable. Well, can we? Like, at all. Yeah, can we talk about the names that are like crazy on the nose? Oh I mean, God. there's Harry Angel, but Lewis Cipher. <laughs> can I tell you this? I've never seen this movie. I swear to God, I didn't know what the twist of it was going to be. Yeah, my note literally says so. De Niro's the devil, right? Like, <laughs> yes. Wrote this well, down. <laughs> and that was the thing. So, like, the first scene, he's like, um, "This is Mr. Lewis Cipher," and I was like, "Oh, okay." De Niro's playing the devil, and then. Uh, then he goes. He goes. Yeah, I'm looking for a guy. He served overseas. He got uh, he got hurt in battle, and they had to do some reconstructive surgery. And he's like, "Oh yeah, I had some of that. Oh, I yeah. also had some trauma and <laughs> lost some of my memory." Yep. Like the first scene tells you they telegraph the twist what's, like um, a motherfucker. What's worse though, scene. in terms of aliases, is it Louis Cipher or Top Secrets? From the number 23. Oh, my oh God. God. Well, at least that movie was trying to be funny. Wow, was it? Yeah, yeah. I, was it? Was it? <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm thinking of a... Com- I was thinking of movie 43. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Very tell you different. guys, there is a cinematic universe here with numbered name movies. Yeah, that's what like I we said. we talked about last week. We could add number 43. Yeah. 101 and Dalmatians. What was that Jackie Robinson movie? 42? 40... Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. forty-two. Yeah, add that in there. Uh, we can three, do a- three kings, and then we got this new uh, Antoine Fuqua movie coming out called Infinite. So there's your infinity right oh, there. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck that movie. Just gonna go and let you it's know. Inc- Fuck it. It's incredible that there's that someone was like, we should cast. We have a character who's been alive forever, and we need someone who can convey the weight. So let's cast Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, the weight of <laughs> centuries of battle. Let's cast Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Uh, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. That's that's the thing. You, what? Sh- you shouldn't know. But the only reason I'm saying fuck that movie is because I've been working with Paramount for some of the uh-huh. BTS stuff on that. Yeah. Oh, God damn it! Like so. Anyway, I'm basically a Highlander. Yeah, yeah. He's essentially a Highlander. I didn't even watch the movie, and I could glean that. But I don't know, guys. This <laughs> sounds like it could be my new favorite. <laughs> it also just made me realize that I think Mark Wahlberg is a terrible actor. One thousand. Like I don't know how he keeps getting work. Like <laughs> he always looks confused yeah. in every shot he's in. Yeah. The only role that I love him in is the other guys because I think he's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, what if he was Harry Angel? Mm-mm. How old was he? Let's see. What do you mean? You're the devil, dude. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch it. I would watch it. I, I'm 100%. curious now. I'm going to look up how old Mark Wahlberg was at the time of this movie. Because I think I think he was still rapping at that point, wasn't he? He would have been 16 years old. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh, how old is he now? He's got to be in his 50s, right? Yeah. Ageless, I think. He just turned 50. Like a couple so, of days uh, he, ago. He was born in 71, so yeah, he was 16. God damn. All right, well, he maybe not. A, he could be a young P.I. He could <laughs> yeah. probably play at 16, like, 20, and theoretically could have served in the military. Where's the Angel Heart remake? They talked about that, actually. That's one of my notes. What? 
And back in uh, 2008, there was going to be a remake, and no other information has come out of that. Oh, weird! But, I want to. Was anyone attached? Um, not that I'm aware of, but like, hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google it actually while we talk. Like, all right, who are you guys casting in the remake? Looks okay. Uh, who, I think oh, shoot, an easier role to cast would be the devil. First, wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Who's directing? <sighs> Tarsim Singh. UA Bowl. <laughs> oh, god damn it. <laughs> okay, I'd watch that. Um, I don't know. I would, like, I would love to see someone, like, I don't know. Martin Campbell. Okay, okay. That'd be good. I don't know why. He just popped in my Honestly, head. Honestly, like... Also directed the movie we're talking about next week. <laughs> if you if you got, like, me- if you got, like, Memento or Insomnia time, Nolan, yeah. like, that would have been good. I don't think Nolan now. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Denis Villeneuve. Oh, yep, down, done. Okay, yeah, Ryan Gosling as Harry Angel. <laughs> Angel Heart yes! is oh next God. in the remake Wait. queue back in 2008. Hugh, hang on, Hugh Jackman as the devil? Mm, I, Hugh Jackman's too likable to play a, a villainous role like that, I think. <sighs> exactly. Christian Bale. Ooh. Maybe. No, actually, no, fuck it, Paul Dano. Ooh. I'm into that. <laughs> I'm into I actually that. don't hate that. <laughs> I'm down uh, for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's no other information. The last news article I see is from 2008 about... Just them announcing it. Yeah. See, I'm more distracted by the Mickey Rourke says 30-year feud with Robert De Niro stems from their yeah, time working I together see. on the 1987 <laughs> film Angel Heart. I read that. It was just... I don't know what it was. I guess De Niro just didn't care for Mickey Rourke that much. Um, but it's it's weird. It took forever for this movie to get made because like they were gonna do uh, like John Frankenheimer was originally gonna direct. Well, with, yeah, there's uh, also an article that just says Angel Heart's twist ending is yeah. insanely obvious from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that, <laughs> and that was from an article from last year. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. It's something about he wanted Mickey Rourke was gonna star in The Irishman like as a small role, and I guess Robert De Niro doesn't like him. Oh, I don't know. Well, yeah, I get the feeling he's he might not be the easiest well, guy to I work with. Mickey like, Rourke. Mickey Rourke is really bad with money, and so like it's always been a point of contention with him. Like mm. it it just wanes on him, I guess. But huh. yeah, I did read this article. Um, Botox isn't cheap. Yeah. Well, oof. <sighs> anyway, um, <laughs> God, there's so many different places to go in this movie. Um, I mean. So, so yeah, we have the we have the super obvious names. We have uh, him kind of getting into the case, and then the thing that I actually loved about this was that there's every couple of scenes there's just a recap on. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, then I mm-hmm. at first I went to this doctor and uh, he died. So then I went over to the meet this uh, pastor, and like it was just like every couple of scenes he tells you the last twenty. It's minutes. It's almost two hours long. This could easily be ninety minutes. I found the pacing so slow. There's one scene that's clearly that was clearly shot, and then instead of showing the scene, they show uh, a silent version of the scene with him narrating over it. So, like when he goes to the guy in the old folks' home, he's like, "So then I went and I went and I met Spider," mm-hmm. and <laughs> like it shows them like talking, but there's no you can't well, hear the dialogue. And it's funny because it being a noir, like usually those are no like that genre is known for its voiceover yeah but that's really the only scene that it happens in in this movie and it's right. kind of out of fucking nowhere yeah i was speaking of names in this movie toot sweet what a fucking name yeah toot sweet <laughs> rules that's a great it's name fan detective damos you combine that with uh harry angel and johnny favorite i'm like yeah this movie screams neo-noir like, i mean it's better than harry hole it's <laughs> <Yeah. that is> true <laughs> toot sweet Toot Sweet has my favorite line in the entire movie. What's that? I remember him. He played the drums like two typewriters fucking. Yep. <laughs> I don't, don't remember that. I think I was zoned out everything by that time. Toot, everything Toot says is amazing. He's he, That actor is fantastic. I like, think once this, once this movie goes to Louisiana that I'm tapped out. Like, really? Oh, dude, that's, that's, where it, that's where I'm like, I'm so into this. Well, I feel like the pacing slows to a grinding halt once they get to Louisiana. I don't know. Well, most but... of the scenes with Epiphany feel like the same scene, like repeated. Oh, yes. yeah. And... Agreed. Yes. Like, Lisa Bonet is great in this movie, but... She's fantastic. Yeah. Every scene, she's doing... This, they're having the same conversation, it feels like. Mm-hmm. And 
Uh, I think she was how old and was purposefully she when- like. But the thing is, like they they're able to do this scene over and over again because she like purposefully leaves stuff out. Yeah, like he interrogates her about Johnny Favorite. She's like, I never heard of him. And then like four scenes later, she's like, Oh, he was my dad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> uh, I'm just curious how old she was when this movie got made. I think she was early twenties. Like, young. Oh no, she was her 20. character's seventeen. She was 20. Yeah. Yeah, I got to say, one of the, I've actually seen Lisa Bonet in person, and it's one of the scariest moments of my life. <laughs> what? Oh, why? Because Jason Momoa was right behind her. <laughs> no, actually, I've I've Jason Momoa. I've been within fifteen feet of um, when I first was that because of the restraining order. You couldn't get closer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I first came to LA, my first job, he was uh, talking with um, uh, our company about doing some uh, production stuff. Mm. And uh, he came in and had a meeting with our CEO. And it's so funny. Our our cafeteria was right next to our conference room, uh-huh. which had all glass, you know, so you could see in. Sure. And I was walking from the cafeteria back to my room, my office, <laughs> and I have to pass by the conference room when I do that. So, like, I pass by. Jace Momoa is a lot bigger in person than you think he's gonna be <laughs> yeah and you probably already imagined Did him as a giant he was gonna be a small no no, no. Man? like no what? i knew he was gonna be big he's still even <laughs> somehow bigger than dustin that. thought he was wearing one of those weird sumo wrestler like body suits <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no but it's like you hear like how how tall is he like six foot three probably he's he is all fucking muscle it's insane I love- since you're screen sharing with us, like I'm just seeing your search history get progressively more unhinged. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. I meant to search Jason Momoa, and I just searched yeah, you six just, foot three. You, you were like, you were like Lisa Bonet birthday, Jason Momoa height. Yeah, let's see how tall. I didn't even spell his name right. My my apologies. He's six foot four. I was pretty close. Jason Momoa. Uh, but no, he is a massive, which is dude. fucking huge. Yeah. So like, I actually made eye contact with him, and I was like, "Oh fuck, turn away, look away." Oh no! And then Dustin turned to stone. I looked right at the King of Atlantis. Yeah, I, like came right in my pants right at that moment. I was like, "Oh," and I kept sure. walking. I get it. You were wearing short shorts, and you fucking know Probably it. Probably <laughs> was. Uh, and I think the next day she came in because he was there. And oh, yeah. I gotta tell you, dude, she is fucking beautiful in person oh, absolutely Holy shit but anyways i'm walking we have like these kind of wide hallways and i'm walking back mm-hmm. to the kitchen at this time <laughs> she she comes strolling across All like i'm gathering from this is that you didn't do a fucking thing besides no nope. hang out in the kitchen no. <laughs> i went back to the kitchen man <laughs> anyways i'm walking to the kitchen and it's like a t-section like i'm at the bottom part and she's going p- a perpendicular to me it's like crossing mm-hmm. the hallways and she's she's got this long flowing dress on, and she turns. She makes eye contact with me, and it was somehow scarier than making eye contact with Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I immediately went into an office on the like attached to the hallway that I didn't even need to go into, but I was like, ah, I can't fucking look at her anymore. No <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she, good I, lord, I feel ashamed. She kind of like it's weird she like glides when she walks yeah. of like like she's too good to walk at this point Dustin's just like in the office like god I wish I wasn't wearing this fucking shirt incredible yeah <laughs> I feel like Zoe Kravitz is the same way like yeah. she just yeah. has that like ethereal nature yes. it's the fa- it runs in the yeah. family even that like three second long interaction I was like yeah I, I don't even need to open my mouth like I can't even say <laughs> hi I'm a big fan I know nope, speaking don't of even say that ethereal how good is De Niro as the fucking devil? He's great. Not in this movie enough. Not in this Honestly, movie enough. C- couldn't no. agree more. Not a very special money. appearance. It's very special appearance. Dude, I love the scene when they're in the church. Yeah. Like, he, dude, it's it's like the little subtleties. Like, he's like, like, uh, Harry Angel says something, and he's like, oh, are you an atheist? Like, Harry, are you an atheist? And he's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, like, De Niro just has that little smirk. He's like, <laughs> yeah and it's so good yeah I, I like that he's like nathan mentioned he's constantly reporting back to him yeah but we as the audience already know all this information <laughs> right so it's it feels like if you took out those scenes because we already have them de niro's only in this movie for like two minutes of screen time yeah right so and de niro will say something like oh did, did you get caught like did you kill them and he's like no i didn't kill him i showed up and found the body so i decided to scrub all the fingerprints it's like we just watched that whole yeah. scene like- yep. <laughs> also i love that he mentions he's like yeah i'm in town for a speaking engagement over at so and so so i'll be in town for it. it's like oh, what yeah. speaking engagement is 
Lucifer <laughs> doing? Like, is he doing a fucking TED talk? <laughs> it's also interesting. You see Lucifer in a church. Like, yeah. that's kind of interesting. Like, I don't think I've seen that in a movie. Like, somebody portraying the devil. End of days. Oh, uh, yeah. God damn it. That's where Schwarzenegger yeah. fights the devil. Yeah. <laughs> Mally, uh, I do have... I, this I, This has to be intentional at this point. Mm. This has to be intentional at this point because this is your movie pick. You talk any more shit, I will call Jason Momoa my goddamn I'm self. I'm about to. Mm. There, this is your movie pick. And once again, there is a fucking character that drinks milk <laughs> in this fucking movie. <laughs> Best believe I fucking noted it. I was like, God damn it, Mickey Rourke just drinking milk out of this with old- a cheeseburger. Oh yeah. Well, no, he he drinks it out of the old doctor's fridge. Yeah. Oh like, right. When he's before first he goes to get the him. cheeseburger. That's right. Oh. Because then he's at the diner eating a cheeseburger and drinking coffee. God damn it. That's yeah. right. Ugh. Like a man. <laughs> like a fucking man. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's funny, like, you know, there's the scenes where he's, they're reporting back, but also, like, and I, again, I mostly dug this movie, I mean, maybe more for the vibe than the screenplay, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. But Nathan I, only like, watches movie for the vibes. Look, man, just only good vibes here. Only <laughs> hey, devil there vibes. There are movies that you watch for the vibe. For, for sure. sure. And, like, and this, like, but there was the... There's the fa- there's all the reporting scenes, but there's also like multiple scenes where huge information is being imparted to the audience through monologue instead of showing us what ha- mm-hmm. like the final scene in the gumbo house. He tells us the whole thing about Johnny oh, favorite it's an being a magician. Dump. Dude, like, that Jesus. is not, again though. That is a noir trait. Yeah, it's just. Maybe it's that is in line with noirs. Maybe it's that actor's delivery yeah, or something. Because I mean, it's that's, just being screamed at a mile a that's minute. That's why a lot of people had such issues with uh, season two of True Detective. Because oh, sure. that season, it was all they told you stuff. They didn't show you anything. Yeah, well, we've discussed season two as True Detective on the show. I fucking back it. Yeah, 100%. no, it's oh, no, I I think it's a great season personally because again it's like it Um, it leans heavy into the super noir feel mm -hmm. it's sicario light that's the way i like to describe it oh sure Uh, it's got some sicario vibes i I see where you're coming but the thing about the thing about classic noir is typically it's someone being like yeah he took the money and so i went after him and killed him it's not Johnny is actually a magician, and he wanted to steal his soul, so he put it into his body, and then they drove him to Brooklyn. They put him in the insane asylum. He got sent off to war. It is a lot of information. Like, I, I had so to pause much. the movie. I was like, Jesus, do I even know what's going on at this point? And it's intercut with, like, these flashes of, like, the like the same shot of him walking up to the guy at Times Square. Like, mm-hmm. it's a very, it's mm-hmm. a very weird and way Mickey to do Rourke it. And Mickey Rourke just screaming who was the boy oh, I, the boy? i wrote this down i'm like how is who was the boy not on the same level as how to what's get in burned? the box <laughs> oh <laughs> why is why is mickey Moore screaming who is the boy it's the same delivery the same cadence it's also Pitt. how to get burned from the wicker man <laughs> and <laughs> that too gary old that too. gary oldman <laughs> Everyone. Everyone. Yeah, we gotta we gotta write these down. This this uh I would love to see a montage of just actors that have those weird line deliveries, but like yeah. I don't understand why this one's not as popular. It it's like should the be the weirdest, but also the loudest. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Who was the boy? We gotta do Leon the professional, right? For this show so we can complete that. I mean, might as well. Sure. Huh. <sighs> um one of my notes that I wrote <laughs> down like pause? Heavy sigh from Dustin and go on. <sighs> because I, I, I don't like this movie, but I, I did have a lot of fun with it. you're wrong. I did have a lot of fun with it. It made me laugh a lot. But one thing that did make me laugh, uh, I wrote down, I love it when my protagonist commits statutory rape. Because what the fuck ah, is up with this sex scene between him yeah. and Lisa Bonet? It's that you mean it's between rough. him and his daughter? Yeah, yeah. This is some old boy shit. That's yeah. <laughs> no, dude. Old boy got it from this. <laughs> Boom. Like that was the thing. Was like we get to that scene, and I was like, okay, so my very last bit of, uh, like interest in this character has vanished <laughs> yeah <laughs> like like i don't i want this like i want this guy to be t- dragged to hell like, <laughs> also that scene is gross I just reali- guys guys i just realized something hmm. the same thing happens in halloween six yeah halloween six got it wait 
from Angel Heart. Wait, 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 we wait. We have found the origin. Expl- explain. Wait, I'm but confused. But we don't see Michael Myers' bare ass while he's, like, flopping like a fish. Well, hang on. Which version did you watch, Nathan? <laughs> well, we did. Well, we talked about Michael Myers' fuck style. We never, we don't know. He That's could true. flop like a fish. Yeah, it might be like Mickey Rourke and that <laughs> screaming with blood raining from the ceiling. I, and honestly, I think it was. <sighs> it's so upsetting. I literally, my one note about this sex scene was... "Quote unquote, dude, who greenlit this movie? I want them dead. Yeah, <laughs> right. I could go my entire life without seeing Mickey Rourke run his t- dirty tongue over a fifteen years his younger Lisa Bonet. That's what was topless, like, which I, I didn't need to see. I really so, don't like watching this sex scene at all. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to enjoy it. No, it was upsetting uh, even before the weird floppy shit happened." No, I'm not supposed to enjoy it, but I I found myself extremely uncomfortable. It, I mean, and, it, don't get me wrong. It goes on for a while. <laughs> yeah. Before, like, all the crazy shit, like the blood and everything. Yeah, I was like, and that's I don't... the thing. So even before it gets to, like, the weird hallucinatory screaming and all that stuff, the, like, so my girlfriend, when the movie started, was just like, fuck, young Mickey Rourke was hot. Yeah. Like, that's insane. Yeah. And then it gets to that scene, and he's like running his tongue around her nipple and (laughs) and my girlfriend just goes like what the fuck like (laughs) he looks like a monster like he looks (laughs) so weird i mean i know it's meant to be unsettling but like woof it's a it's a tough set i hope you did not masturbate today (laughs) well it just makes me wonder if the only movie that had a sex scene in it that Tommy Wiseau had ever seen was this. Oh. He's like, oh, so they're supposed to be seven oh. minutes long? Got it. Okay, makes sense. Seven minutes long, and it looks like they're going into the belly button. Yeah. 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 I felt, when I saw this scene, the only thing Ugh. I could think of was... I don't feel so good. Like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> I wanted to puke, dude. Because I'm thinking, all right, this is in the 50s. There's probably no air conditioning in this place. It's Louisiana, so it's hot as Everyone's- balls. Yeah, everybody's sweaty. Mickey Rourke is grimy as shit in this movie. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this has got to be the nastiest smelling room of all time. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Even Rob Zombie sexual like scenes probably aren't as gross as this. <laughs> uh, oh, dude, that shack was disgusting. Like, yeah, I think I the know. operative word here is shack. Like, it looked <laughs> awful. Um. Plus, Mickey Rourke keeps touching women, like, unprompted mm-hmm. throughout this movie, and it's fucking weird. Like, it's it's so, like, he keeps, he touches Lisa Bonet, and, like, without her permission, he he touches uh, Charlotte Rampling's character, and I'm like, dude, stop fucking touching right. people. <laughs> I mean, again, like, you know, the reveal here is that he's, like, stolen someone, someone else is inhabiting his body, and he's committing all these murders, so, like, I guess it's meant to make you wonder, like where harry ends and where johnny begins but it still is just it makes for a really uncomfortable time yeah (sighs) (laughs) 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 we've gone through like half my notes but like um it's also i mean it's supposed to be set in the 50s but it just brings up again i think we've talked about this before in older movies Mm -hmm. but man we dressed like shit back in the back in the days, man. Nothing was fitted. Everything was baggy as shit. Oh, you don't like those wide ties? The wide ties and the loose as fuck, three times bigger than your normal <laughs> size pants are like. But God the one thing it. I will say is that the one things the fifties had that we don't is that you could just walk around in a suit. And it wasn't weird. Yeah. Like, no one questions, like, oh, why are you dressed up? Like, that's just how yeah. people dressed. And yeah. that was cool. There is a, th- yeah, there's <laughs> there's something magical about uh, 80s movies that take place in the 50s. Because mm-hmm. everything, like, looks smoky. Everyone's wearing, like, shitty clothes. Yeah, everything and looks just dirty and gross. Everything's wet. <laughs> Everything yeah. is sopping wet. Like especially <laughs> when you put yourself your your setting in Louisiana for half this movie. It's like this right. is the grossest movie. This is like a grindhouse is this feeling. This is the sweatiest movie we've ever talked I about. I think it might be. The sweatiest? Hmm, that's that's it's sweatier hard. than crank. That's tough. What there's some sweaty fucking movies we've I, done. I, dude, I'm I think sh- this might be the sweatiest movie we've covered. You might be right. Nothing comes to mind right now. 
Uh-huh. I will say next week's probably going to beat it. <laughs> it's close. It's pretty gross. Man, um, I, I'm trying to figure out what we're doing next week. But I, like I said, I'm hoping by the end of the episode you figure it out. Sweaty it's, movie. It'll be obvious. With a guy who's not good at his job that drinks something very specific. Well, he's. it's not that he's not good at his job, but he's like a job kind of like Mickey Rourke in this movie where he should be a lot more covert than he is. Right. And he's not at all <laughs> in oh, that movie. Oh, okay. Got it. So which of the National Lampoons, or no, sorry, not, not which of the Naked Gun films are we doing next oh, week? Oh, fuck. I wish. I wish. Uh, we doing 33 oh, and a third? <laughs> <laughs> Did I just spoil next week's movie? Oh, God. What if What if they made this movie with Leslie Nielsen oh, as my. Harry Angel? Sold. Done. Mm. Down. <laughs> And uh, O.J. Simpson as Louis Cypher. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> y'all take care. Uh, yeah, y'all take care. All right, great episode, guys. Uh, uh, David, if I could high-five you right now, you'd get, you'd get a nice one. Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> y'all take care. God bless Carl Tart. God damn Absolutely. it, he's great. Um, yeah, my question stands, though. What is with these fucking nose shields? Oh. Do they serve a purpose? Yeah, so okay. you don't get so you don't so your nose doesn't get sunburned because he wears them in Louisiana too. So your nose doesn't get sunburned. No shit. But what is the point of the movie? Like he wears. I th- he- okay, I think it literally like Mickey Rourke is one of those actors that I feel like says oh, I need some business. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. like I feel like you could see that in stuff like Iron Man Two, where I guarantee you he went to John Favreau and was like, I want my character to be obsessed with his parrot. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Like so I just I feel like every day on the set you know, uh, Mickey Rourke's going up to Alan Parker and just being like, I think someone should give me a nose shield. I think uh I think I don't like chickens maybe. Yeah, but like there's n- there's so many clouds in the sky at that beach scene. Like, there's no right. sun out there. Well, and they, there's a line of dialogue about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's like, well, we, I wear it to protect my skin or whatever, like my nose from and the he's sun. Like, but it's cloudy. He's like, yeah, it keeps the water off, too. Like, what? The, he doesn't go in the water. <laughs> Also, that scene felt like it was directed by David Lynch. Yeah, like the scene, yeah. like him yelling at the lady out in the surf. It Dude, felt like a Twin Peaks scene. I loved it. Has my favorite line of the movie because oh, it's yeah. like my note is literally, "What the fuck even is this movie?" Because she <laughs> screams at him, "Don't be a gazuni fella." Really? It was the fifties. Yeah, her literal <laughs> words are, "Don't be a gazuni fella." Don't like be he, a he says something like. I think he's trying to figure out who um, Epiphany is. And huh. he says, oh, do you know so-and-so? She goes, oh, they're the same person, basically. But before she says that, she goes, oh, don't be a gazuni. I'm like, what the what fuck is, it? is What's that? What's a gazuni? <laughs> I don't know. I guess maybe like a I'm crazy I'm assuming person? it's like weird 50 slang. Yeah. it's de- She's from New Jersey, I think. It's slang so. for a carny. <laughs> but I was like, what the f- This definitely has some... Lynchian vibes to it. This movie. Uh, wait. Okay. Hang on. This movie starring Leslie Nielsen and O.J. Simpson, directed, directed by, by David, David Lynch. Lynch. <laughs> Guys, I'm a, I'm not a big David Lynch fan, but I might watch that. That sounds great. <laughs> Wrong again. <laughs> well, no, um, wait. You talking about Leslie Nielsen as uh, the Harry Angel role? Harry Angel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can we put Justin Theroux in there somewhere because he was also in Mulholland Drive and. Uh, Inland Empire, yeah. can we put him I in I mean, if we movie? can make a time travel movie, like, put everyone <laughs> that we want from all of history. <sighs> and this Wait, is... hang on, hang on. Who's Thoreau playing, though? Mm, he is he going to play a wine zap or whatever? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's the detective with the twitchy eyes. Can he oh, play... Okay. No, I want okay. him to play um, the Dan Floric role, the, the guy that's, like, the assistant to Robert De Niro. So, I guess, the assistant oh, sure. to yeah, wine, yeah, wine, wine zap, zap or whatever. Speaking of which, I saw Dan Florek in this movie, who a lot of people know from Law and Order. Mm-hmm. I sw- at first, I thought it was a young Stephen Tobolowsky, and I was losing my mind. <laughs> I thought it was him too. Hey, yes. You. Okay, I'm not I'm vindicated. <laughs> yeah, no, I really did. I was like, shit, this is a, an interesting choice for him. Harry, you gotta go find Johnny Favre. <laughs> like, I was really hoping for Stephen Tobolowsky in this movie. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Harry Angel, how the hell are you? Yeah. <laughs> Also, it might just be because I've just finished rewatching Atlanta, which has yeah. some very Lynchian moments in it as well. <laughs> yes. Mm. But I kind of want Donald Glover as Toot Sweet. 
<laughs> oh no, man! Oh, you make fuck. OJ That'd too great. sweet. You make Donald Glover a Louis Cipher. I like that. Ooh, yeah, this I is like, a okay. dumb movie we're pitching here. Uh, <laughs> no, we're. This is one of the rare cases where we're improving upon perfection. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna dream about this movie tonight. <laughs> uh, Mike, I have a note here too because this is right after Toot Sweet gets his dick cut off and shoved down his throat. Yeah, um, which, which Jesus fucking Christ! Also, this is so crazy that we're I'm putting this together. That is also a threat that happens in the movie for next week. <laughs> Somebody, yes! Oh my God, it does. That is so fucking bizarre. You're what right. Is happening? Wait, are you guys fucking with me? And we're just no, doing no, a I two parter on God. Angel Heart. <laughs> I swear to God. The movie we're doing next week, somebody is about to get their dick cut off and put down their throat. That's right. This is so what fucking What a wholesome bizarre. season. Okay, I feel like you guys have just been fucking with me with this re- like there actually is there actually is an Angel Heart remake and that's what we're doing next week, right? <laughs> Dude, I next season, next season I'm pitching this idea here now live on the air. We start we start off with I guess the wrestler. Um uh-huh. And then we just make a through line that somehow connects each episode from the last one. It, it can be yeah. minor. Right. But like, so this fine, one, we got to find another movie where Rick, Mickey Rourke has a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, think about it. If we did The Wrestler last week, we keep it going because Mickey Rourke's in this movie. Yeah. We did all this stuff that we're connected to next week's movie gets connected. And we just keep building on a chain like that. Like, I love that. This yeah. is a great idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyways, my it's note. It's certainly an idea. <laughs> my note was. After Tootsweet gets his dick cut off and, you know, uh, Harry finds that out, mm-hmm. at what point, I'm asking you guys this, and it doesn't have to be at this moment in particular, but what point do you just say, fuck this and just go home? Because sure, I don't think I would have even bothered going to Louisiana. He kept trying to, and then he's like, I'll give you $5,000. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, even at that, like, when he's like, go to Louisiana, I'm like, mm, nah, that sounds terrible. No. <laughs> It's hot there. <laughs> yeah, that's it, it's also like this is the fifties and there's some weird race shit going on still down there. Sure. So uh, I don't feel comfortable doing that. And then I would just go oh, home man. and the movie's over. <laughs> right. Uh I don't know. I, that, that at that point, especially like if I did happen to go to Louisiana and then I find out this guy that I I mean, everybody I've just talked to has died. Right. So fuck this. I don't want my dick cut off. I'm going home. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. I keep finding limit. animal parts. But keep parts. in mind, like, what, 5000 I think $5,000 in 1955 oh, is, it's like... it's a lot. It's a what, lot. like, $50,000 today or something like Let's that? Let's look it up. Inflation. I th- Hang on. Hang on. Because I am... I mean, $5,000 is a decent amount of money anyway, like, even in $5, today's standards. $5,000, okay, in 1955... Oh, you beat me to it. ...is equivalent in purchasing power to about... Fifty thousand two hundred twenty-two dollars oh, and ninety-five really cents close. today. All right, you were really close. <sighs> it's fifty thousand dollars worth it. The, the I mean, the guy you just talked to had his dick cut off. Another guy you talked to got shot in the fucking face. Man, we find out a woman you talked to had her heart ripped out. Well, like my question is, how how successful is his business? Because if if we if we go by the ending of the movie, mm-hmm. he's been Harry Angel for what five years, <laughs> ten Something years. Like that. He's at least had a couple of cases under his belt. Yeah, but like he doesn't have a lot of experience, so maybe he's just like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm invincible. Well, and he also says like he only does like divorces and like yeah insurance like fraud spies on cheating husbands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This um. I'm just thinking about this now. This movie reminds me of Heavy Rain. <laughs> the game? <laughs> like, sure. The character, the character you're following the whole time turns out to be the one that's committing all the murders. And it's sure. just been missing information. I hated that video game. I love it. Yeah. I still love oh, it. Oh, no. I loved it until I realized that all of the character decisions, like, because that game was, like, hyped up because it's, like, you know, depending on, like, yeah what you do everything changes yeah the ending never like it's the same ending no matter what and that pisses right. me off it so takes much. away no. the illusion of control yeah no no there's there's like six different endings to that game i mean granted the, barely barely granted a lot of the decisions don't matter but there are pivotal moments that do that completely right. change the trajectory like i do like that the dad character i can't remember his name but like i think it's ethan but like if you just choose not to mm-hmm. 
do some of the stuff that your son just fucking dies. <laughs> like, right. One of the few games that's brave enough to just straight up kill children. Would you like to feed your child? <laughs> so brave. No. <laughs> Plus, it's got some of the funniest memes of like him running around oh, screaming, sure. Sean! That shit's so fucking funny. Isn't and that I, the one that also has that... It has the chase through the supermarket, and if you don't do any of yes. the right like <laughs> things, he just keeps tripping yep, over. Dude, stuff. there's a YouTube video of a guy that's played the game that purposely fails all of the chicks on there. And it's, it's the funniest it, fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, all the all the uh, the quick time events <laughs> yes. are like wrong. It's he like gets he gets like a chicken thrown in his yeah, face. Yeah, like, yeah. He slips so and good. runs into shit. It's hilarious. It's so <sighs> fucking good. chickens. Yeah, it had to be chickens. <laughs> I have this idea of like getting a group of people together to play that game. Yeah. And anytime a decision comes up, we let the group decide and just see where the game goes from there. Oh, I love that. Like, right? And well, everybody's drinking. It doesn't matter because it'll be the same person at the end, no matter fucking what. <laughs> right. Oh, <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, where else do we want to go with this? I only have a few other notes left. Um, Is the baby possessed? Yeah. It's got to be. Like I, that in, that last shot is just Dude, so weird. I also laughed the, my yeah, tits off. Yeah, the effect <laughs> on the eyes is so bad both times. It's it really happens. bad. Dude, I laughed so fucking... Well, the, like, I was at the work kid's watching head this. actually freezes. Yeah. And it's moving independently <laughs> of the body. And then it also is accompanied by easily the most ham-fisted line in the movie. Which is where he says, like, Harry, you're going to burn for what you've done. And he yeah. goes, I know, in hell. Yeah. <laughs> like, fucking <laughs> immediately cut to credits. So first off. This is, the ending of this movie is so abrupt. I didn't know this this ending was coming. This I mean, I figured out that De Niro was the devil, but I was waiting on the, like, the, the, the character to figure it out. Uh, and I was watching this movie at work. I had headphones on. And when they showed God, De Niro, you don't do a fucking thing at your job, do you? I You're know. hanging in the kitchen, or watching movies. I automate all my shit so I can watch movies and TV shows at work. But dude, when they showed De Niro with these yellow eyes, I fucking lost it. I laughed so goddamn hard out of nowhere because, because I had he headphones. looks like Michael Jackson at the end of the Thriller video. Yeah. Yeah, well, they're like and then, it's like yellow eyes, but with like an outline of green. Yeah, yeah, and then. When they Why showed, didn't he go with, like, red or something? I, I, like, I think it looks good, like, in terms of, like, doing something unique for that character. But I thought it was so fucking funny because it comes out of nowhere. And, dude, yeah. when they showed that baby with the fucking demon eyes, I, I, lost, at him. I lost it. I collapsed. I was just in tears laughing. I, my notes are, leave, are even, ha, 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 Oh, no, not the demon baby. <laughs> oh, no. And then Robert De Niro with this fucking wig? Yeah. Holy shit, dude. I fucking, it was, it's not supposed to be funny, but I thought it was, it redeemed the past hour and 45 minutes for yeah, me. it's fucking awesome. <laughs> I thought it was so fucking funny. <laughs> Uh, um, I have a question though. Like for your casual, you know, movie watcher, is this reveal supposed to be surprising? Because it's, I think it is. Like it's that's the thing. Like it's a revelation. Yeah, I think it is supposed to be. I think it is supposed to be surprising, which blows my mind because I feel like it's the most telegraphed thing in the movie. Yes, like there's no real like red herrings or anything like that. No, I I agree. I I think it, it I think it's meant to be a surprise, but it is not. It's I wonder not. if people were surprised back in the day cuz like how old is the trope of the main character was the one responsible all along? Like I feel oh, like that's got to be an old trope. Since yeah. the beginning of storytelling. It's got to be, right? So like this can't be that revolutionary of a fucking reveal and it's weird because like with doing my research this movie is really high regarded like as like yeah. not only being a good movie but having like a great reveal yeah and it's also regarded as one of the highest like not grossing but like the highest uh respected horror movies i don't consider this a horror movie no i don't think so either all. no not at all so like at, at best it's a thriller yeah but it's more of like a mystery i guess because the devil is included yeah. yeah, I don't know. I think it got pretty pretty bad reviews when it first came out, though. Like, it was one of those that was, like, kind of rediscovered later. Yeah, and for me, it's not even, like, a cult classic kind of rediscovering. It's just like, oh, okay. 
I guess because I've seen this movie done a thousand different times now. So sure. So it didn't really offer a whole lot in terms of originality and uniqueness. But maybe back then, I don't know. Well, that's the thing. Like, the mov- the movies you're probably watching came from... Yeah, We're inspired exactly. from this, yeah. Which is... A, yeah, that's yeah. a large issue amongst, like, people our age nowadays. Yeah, it's sure. a bummer. I'm... Sh- I'm sure this was like, whoa, what a crazy reveal back then. But like, maybe not. I don't know. Um, I only have a few other notes. Is there anything other that we missed that you guys want to talk about? Just the bleak credit scenes. I mean, like, I like it. I love it. Yeah, it's it's a really it's an interesting thing. Like cutting, breaking up the credits every couple of seconds with more shots of Harry descending into hell on an I, elevator. I do think that the the uh, Robert De Niro lines at the end are stupid, though. Where he's oh, like, where he says their names? Yeah. Thought that was kind of dumb. Oh, like the little whisper at the very end? Yeah, Harry, Johnny. Yeah, it's stupid. Yeah. You know what's fucked up is that that means that he took Harry's soul, too, and Harry didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, not really. That is, that is true. I didn't even think it, about like, that. Like, whenever yeah. he's killing people and doing all these awful things, it's because Johnny's taken over. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um... I only have a few other little things that we can talk sure. about. Um, I One thing I really liked in this movie, and it's only for, like, I think one shot, maybe. But, mm-hmm. man, do I miss, like, straight up diners. Okay. <laughs> you know? Like, I know there's, like, Waffle House, but that, those don't really exist on the West Coast. Oh, but sure. Just, they do here, sir. But just, like, going into a diner, having a waitress come up to your table, take your order, and you can, you know, there's the bar right there. I, always, I think yeah. diners are dope. And... I, it's so stupid, but my favorite part of a diner is the, the fucking glass container with the cake in it. I don't know why, but I'm always <laughs> sure. like, that's fucking dope. <laughs> I don't know. I miss diners. We don't really have those out here. Oh, I guarantee there are. You just got to hunt for there them. There probably is. There probably is. I, I don't even mean like specifically. You just don't have Waffle House. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't even mean specifically like rockabilly type things, but like just diners in general, I think are pretty pretty cool i don't know okay um <laughs> cool story <laughs> did anyone else did anyone else think of uh danny devito with uh robert de niro's eating that egg, egg. the only thing i could think about was can i offer you an egg in these trying times <laughs> <laughs> I, I i i can i'd never want to see robert de niro eat a fucking egg ever again no. i don't want to see him eat it i don't want to see him roll it on a plate and like crack the shell off of it. I don't know. That whole scene made me very uncomfortable. But not like I a, just don't think like I don't. Some about people eating eggs makes me uncomfortable. Because yeah. again, I just rewatched Atlanta, and if you haven't seen the Teddy Perkins episode, <laughs> oh my, there's something involving an egg and huh. Yeah, I um, Jesus. I really liked. I really liked the pastor character in the New York scenes, especially when he's talking to his congregation. He's like, "Oh, people see me rolling around in a Cadillac." But if they really love me, I should be rolling around in Rolls Royce. That was a great fucking line. <laughs> Which, again, the devil inside of a church. Yeah. I, I thought that was funny as shit, though, because I just kept thinking of, like, um, who's that really creepy fucking pastor that had that the whole... The Righteous Gemstones. No, no, no. The, this is a real dude that, like, the guy that Jim bought... Jim Baker? Uh, is that the guy that bought... Jim Jones. Tyler Perry's jet or whatever? What? Oh, I don't know. Oh, my God. Did, I, I, let me... I gotta find it. Um... <laughs> This dude is and creepy. back to Dustin's on this week's episode of In <laughs> Dustin's Search History. This dude is bananas crazy. Why are you Googling Medea's airplane? <laughs> <laughs> uh y'all keep y'all keep talking while I look this up. Nope. You Dead gotta silence <laughs> while you look this up, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, see. Yeah. In the meantime, we can talk about the cop that drops not only two in bombs. I was really hoping we didn't have to talk about yeah, that. <laughs> I don't want to. I actually hate that guy. Um, yeah, because yeah, he's, really he's talking up. about like at first it, he's talking about like voodoo stuff, mm-hmm. and then he just goes full on awful racist. Yeah, um, it's, like two point. It's seconds. really bad. Um, and it, like again, it's it's weird because it feels like it's meant to make him sort of like a villainous character to Harry, but then he never gets a comeuppance. Nothing ever really comes of it. Yeah. Dustin, what are you looking this up? Kenneth guy, Copeland. His name is Kenneth Copeland. This dude is fucking bananas. You've got to look him up on YouTube. Not just this clip, but anyways, 
Uh, Inside is doing a Damn it, of course he lives in Texas. (laughs) He's doing an interview with Inside, and they're like, you know, if you're a preacher who talks about, like, you know, that that the meek shall inherit the earth and everything, why are you buying a a plane, like a jet? Why don't you travel economy? And he's like, oh, well, Tyler Perry made me an offer on his old jet that I just couldn't say no, and I can't fly economy because that's where the devils are. (laughs) He's not wrong. Jesus. I'm not doing it justice. I'm not doing it justice. You gotta watch this interview. It's fucking crazy. Um, he also did something about the COVID vaccine too that I can't remember. That was hilarious. But anyway, they injecting the devils into us. <laughs> uh, the only other note that I have was death by gumbo. Yeah, what a way to go out. Delicious. Oh, That's how I want to go. <laughs> it sounds delicious. Sounds awful. <laughs> sounds thick. Boiling hot gumbo. Ugh, ugh. Which, that's one thing I do like. Every character that dies, the thing that kills them, Harry interacts with earlier in the movie. Mm-hmm. Which is great. Like when he opens the drawer, when he's searching the guy's house, he find he like picks up the gun, looks at it, and then he, you know that guy gets shot with that gun. Right. And then the palm reading lady. He like is just fucking with that knife, and then she gets her heart cut out with it. Right. Yeah. And then the gumbo. <laughs> I love when he walks in. It's Chekhov's gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> and like he just kind of looks at the gum, like picks up like a crab and kind of like plays with the crab and just tosses it oh. into the gumbo pot. <laughs> right. Oh, Chekhov's gumbo. <laughs> That's great. Chek- um, I'm only. I'm never saying Chekhov's gun ever again. It's only going to be Chekhov's gumbo. <laughs> We haven't done this on the show before when it comes to a movie like this, but can we talk about best kill? Oh. Like, do you guys have a, a kill that you think is the best in the movie? Oh, shit. For me, it's the heart like being cut this out. this movie or all time? Oh, no, no. Just, <laughs> just this movie. Oh. I was like, because you got to give me a minute to think. <laughs> best kill of all time in this movie. I mean, the gumbo one's fucking brutal. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty all intense. Right. I, I think the heart getting cut out is raw as shit well i don't know the penis cut off and choked it that's true it. but we at least don't ever see which reminds that. me of a ch- if, if y'all haven't read haunted by chuck polanuck oh yeah something very something very mm. similar happens in that book there's a i, I think the quick shot of wine sap getting picked up and just going like Bleh! like yeah. <laughs> it's pretty great <laughs> oh yeah that's definitely a deleted scene right yeah okay well, i love when he's like what happened to wine sap he's like Oh, he died. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like, yeah, you know. De Niro's so nonchalant. It's like, oh, he died. <laughs> um, well, I only have one piece of trivia that I think you guys will be delighted to hear. Okay. I doubt that. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Uh, the best review of this film I could find was, <clears throat> and I quote, Angel Heart is a movie by white America that cast a black girl Gave her voodoo things to do and have sex. Yep. Nathan, you sound like you already know this. I saw this quote. Uh, uh, Mally, do you want to guess who the acclaimed film critic is that said this? <laughs> Nicholas Cage. I'll give you two more guesses. Uh, I don't know film critics. Rob e- Ebert? Nope. You're close. How is he close? <laughs> That's what I said. Bill Burr. I don't fucking Ooh. know. You got the first name oh, right. Actually, so he's close. Yeah. That quote. Bill O'Reilly. No. Who? Any other famous bills you can think? Of? <laughs> Let's see. Clinton? Think about this. Lisa Bonet. Who was she connected to with the first name Bill? Did I already say Clinton? Mm, that's not it. I'll just go ahead and tell you that was from acclaimed film critic Bill Cosby. No! Oh God damn it. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Who apparently was very supportive of Lisa Bonet being cast in this movie. Like, her getting yeah. more roles. But uh, after he saw the movie, he was like... Which is not wrong. Which is the no, crazy No, that's part. the thing. Is he's he's not wrong he's about that. On. Like, it's there's some weird, like, othering and fetishization going on in this movie yeah. with black people and voodoo. And it's super uncomfortable. Well, it's like... Um, this is funny enough. This ties in... With the leftovers, because there's a scene in season two mm-hmm. where there is a quote unquote magical black man that lives right outside of town. <laughs> right. And they bring attention to it. They're like, that's borderline racist that you're even considering talking to this dude. <laughs> right. And asking him about it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, well, what a what a film review. Thank you, Bill Cosby. <laughs> oh Jesus. 
That's the log line for the season. Oh, no. Yeah. Thanks, Bill Cosby. Uh, all right. Let's get in to one of my favorite segments of the show, Prop Cop. A little bit of a delay there on the... <laughs> yes. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so, I'll go first. Okay. Uh-huh. I mean, I need the devil's walking stick. Ooh, that's nice. a good one. Very yep, nice. Yep, yep. Nathan, what about you? Um. Okay, so... My immediate thought is the I want that cross with all the nails in it because it looks metal as fuck. Okay, it, of course. Um, although pre the guy getting his head shoved into it, I would love a bowl of that gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is that? Forty year old gumbo almost. <laughs> yeah, um, it gets, it's like gumbo's like wine, man. It just gets better with age. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> it definitely does. Um, like everything's in there just like for 40 years just simmering all the juices oh. are flowing into each well, other it's like that um it's like that never-ending soup that's in like uh somewhere in asia i can't remember it's like a soup that they've been cooking for like hundreds of years like they just keep changing out the contents of it have you guys heard about right. that yeah exactly yeah, yeah. i have yeah yeah Dude, imagine doing that with gumbo that is the, oh <laughs> oh man imagine <laughs> Love how it. thick it would be <laughs> chunky <laughs> anyway uh so by descending order i was like i wouldn't mind that straight razor that they used that to kill is the chicken cool. with that is cool sure that's pretty cool then i was like no nah. but what about that sick pentagram necklace that margaret was wearing mm. oh that's a good one that's pretty yeah. cool yeah but yep. ultimately i had to go with the fake heart that they cut out of uh charlotte <laughs> Rampage's nice. character because nice. if you remember I got a brain from last week with pie, so I'm just going to be building a body's worth of organs this <laughs> oh, season. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> the bride of Dustin goes to Hollywood. <laughs> I mean, missed opportunity. You could have taken Toots's severed penis. Oh, I could have taken his... Well, we don't see it. That's the we'll only do problem. the episode. Ne- yeah, <laughs> right. It's got to be on camera for me to pick it, so... Oh, my fault. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, you could have taken the idea of Toots' seven that, penis. W- yeah. Like a theoretical dick and balls. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did they say the balls also? Oh, that's true. I think they just... Well, they didn't specifically say dick, uh, did we they? We don't know. I, I think, think they, they just said, said his... Quiet. Uh, maybe it's just his genitals. I don't remember. Maybe. I don't remember. Uh, that's a good Guess segue, we gotta though. watch, boys. That's a good segue to Silver Linings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, who wants to go Jesus. first? Uh, I mean, I'll go. Oh, okay. you go. Ooh, I like you guys fighting over first. It's I first on the show. I uh No, look. no, no. Hang on. I'm the senior here. Fair enough. <laughs> um <laughs> And like uh, let's be honest, you guys know exactly who I'm siding with in this film. I mean, yep. the devil got the soul he wanted. That's right. All right. Razzle dazzle boom shaka laka laka. <laughs> well, Nathan, if you don't mind, yeah, because go for it. Mally's actually kind of ties in nicely with mine. I said it from the other point of view. Uh, Johnny got exactly what was coming to him. Yep. So he's going straight to hell, which is definitely what he deserves. For sure. Um, and even though he's a protagonist of this movie, he is not a good person. And at the very least, the people he's murdered, like the gumbo dude, Charlotte Rampling's character, they all will at least get justice knowing that their murder is burning in hell, burning in hell forever. So Yeah. So we leave you with very thin <laughs> silver linings that you can oh, pick no. from. I know exactly what my silver lining is. Ooh. The devil got a glow up, y'all. Oh, like, true. When he, <laughs> true. When he gets that soul and his hair, he lets his hair down. <laughs> his eyes start glowing. He's in, he's, he's looking good. So I'm glad two of us sided with the devil on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> what is I the, will say, um, biggest missed opportunity of this film, though, and I know it happened because this movie came out in 87 and this song didn't drop until like late 89. Yeah. But I really want to see an edit where the credits, the song over it is Love in an Elevator by Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> this just made me think about something. Yeah. Speaking of elevators and the devil, how do you guys feel about that devil movie? With, with, uh, oh, with the Shyamalan? Didn't see it. Me neither. Logan Marshall Green is the first time I saw him. It's not bad from what i remember i saw it in theaters I've heard and i haven't seen good. it since yeah i never got around to seeing well, it Shyamalan, though. i don't think directed it i think he, he produced just wrote it. it i think he produced it yeah oh, okay. you might be right you might be right it's He's got a new bad. movie coming out and i don't know how that's gonna go old Wait, have have you guys read the graphic novel it's based off of 
Mm-mm. Oh, no, I didn't realize it was based uh, off of one. Oh, yeah, no, I'll send you the link. It's a quick read. It's only like 90 pages. Okay, cool. Um, oh, <laughs> mm. Interesting. I mean, here's the thing about Shyamalan, and I, I'm saying this. Don't know how it's going to translate. Because <laughs> Priscilla's actually interested in that movie, too. And I'm like, you know that Shyamalan, right? She goes, yeah, but <laughs> I will say Shyamalan always has really intriguing premises. He could just mm-hmm. never bring them home. So, I mean, I think Priscilla knows what she's in for. I mean, she's used to disappointment. She has been with you for how long? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I will say, like, old has a decent premise. So, I am, sure. I am curious. And I will see it, maybe not in theaters, but, you know, like I said, he always has good premises. He just can never bring mm-hmm. them home. It's kind of like Abrams, too. Like, uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit so. um, all right, guys. Uh, we got to talk about... Pick me up movie alternatives, or as mm-hmm. I like to call the rebranding, is uh, the double feature. So the idea is here: you watch Angel Heart, and then afterwards you watch one of the movies that we pitch yeah. to have a double feature. So Angel Heart leaves you feeling kind of down. You know, our main character goes to hell. Right. What's a movie you could watch afterwards to uh, bring us back up into good moods? Nathan, what do you got? The uh, the funniest movie about a deal with the devil ever made. Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny. <laughs> okay. All right. It's not bad. Mally, what Good you got? choice. I mean, I'm sticking. I'm riding this De Niro train. <laughs> We're going meet the parents. Oh, good job. Meet Good the call. parents. Nice. Well, I, of course, went with, uh, I mean, the only logical movie you watch after this, Angels in the Outfield. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> I did briefly consider that. But no, um, I think you got to keep this Mickey Rourke train going. Mm. You watch Man on Fire. Oh, great movie. Hell yeah. Not only because, of course, Mickey Rourke's in it. But if you think about it, he goes to hell in this movie. He's definitely on fire. <laughs> so uh, there you go. That's a great Denzel movie, too. Like Hell yeah. I need to rewatch Man on Fire. I haven't seen it in a while. But yeah. Nice. Uh, all right. And lastly, before we get out of here, uh, do you recommend this movie? Absolutely. I- yeah, I think it's worth a yeah. watch. I think it's there's some clunky bits, but man, like it's it's a good it's a time singular experience. In a manner of yeah. speaking, I will say um, I'm on the fence. Shut up, Dustin. Uh, because this movie about to knock you off that fucking <laughs> fence. I think it drags and drags. Like the pacing is really bad. There's uh-huh. like 20 minutes worth of shit you can cut out. But man, seeing Robert De Niro in this goofy ass wig and this press on nails. It sure is something. <laughs> like, I think you just fast forward and just get to all his scenes, honestly. Like, just watch the dinner row scenes. That's all you really need. <laughs> and all right. hey, audience, please ignore Dustin. Watch the entire movie. <laughs> Somehow this episode is longer than the one we just did on Pi, which I feel like is a much more dense movie that we should have. <laughs> I will say, I did not expect this to be such a long episode. I did not I'm rather either. shocked. <laughs> all right. Well, that is Angel Heart. From 1987, if you haven't already, please, 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 please subscribe wherever you are because you get notified immediately as soon as we drop new episodes, which we're doing. We got 24 more to come this season every Monday. Oh, Jesus Christ. 24 more. Buckle the fuck up. Uh, If you haven't already, also, please leave us a rating. Leave us some feedback. Let us know how we're doing. If you, you know, we don't even ask that you give us five stars. You can give us one. I don't give a shit because the more stars we get... Well, I mean, I kind of give a shit, but the more stars we get, the easier it is for people to find us. So if you want to be that guy that is to us by giving us a one star because we're five stars right now, like that guy that gave Paddington a poor review on Rotten Tomatoes, you want to knock us off that 100% meter? That's fine. That's totally your right to do that. But anyway, um, our goal is to be the top rated one star podcast on iTunes. Ooh, that's not like... <laughs> It's kind of an oxymoron, but I'm not opposed to it. Yeah. Uh, if you want to, you can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, uh, somewhat reluctantly, because I don't really like Facebook as a platform anymore. But, you know, I do it for the show. We do have people on there that follow us. If you want to, you can like us on there. You can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. Just search for Silver Linings Playlist, not Playbook, and you will find us, hopefully. Um, we also have a subreddit. A Reddit that's got all the possible information you could ever need for our show. It's uh, reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. Uh, on there, you can even uh, leave us a suggestion for an episode you think we should do. Um, which, 
honestly, more than likely, it's probably already on our to-do list because that list is hundreds of episodes deep at this point. Um, but maybe you've got one that we don't have, and that would be great. We would love to hear from you. And if you want to be a guest on the show, we're always open to that. We've had some guests on the show before that uh, have reached out to us and said they want to be on, and it's it's worked out great, I think. So, Nathan, uh, next week is your first official pick for an episode for the show. Yeah. Since you join us um, full time. So I got to say, uh, Mally, I hope you've figured it out by now. <laughs> but if you haven't. Yeah, totally haven't. If you haven't, maybe Nathan's clue will push yeah. you over the edge. Doubt so, it. So, Nathan, I'm excited to hear. What is your clue for next week's episode? Oh, well, wait a minute. Wait a oh, minute. Wait a minute. Uh-huh. Now go. <laughs> <laughs> I think to properly enjoy next week's episode, you're going to need three measures of Gordon's, one of vodka, uh, half a measure of Keenan Lillet, shake it very well until it's ice cold, and then add a large, thin slice of lemon peel. That sounds good. I'll have one of those, too. Hold the fruit. <laughs> fuck? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't even want to know, Mal, if you figured it out or not by now. So what I will say um, is... Uh, Thank you for listening, everyone. Please tune in next week for what is sure to be a jam-the-fuck-packed episode. And until then, as always, Excelsior. Harry, Johnny. Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look it up. Oh. Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters.